Welcome to the farms.com risk management educational grain commodity marketing school video series. This video series is being brought to you by DeKalb Brand Seeds to educate producers across Canada about commodity marketing. Well, in this 15th video, we're going to look at basis again, but this time we're looking at uh, basis for non storable commodities such as livestock. In the last video series, we, we looked at um, uh, basis for storable commodities. So today we're going to recap basis from last time. Basis can get a little bit complicated for producers. We're going to give some examples for non-storable commodities. We're going to look at how to manage that basis going forward. Look at resources and how to also hedge the Canadian dollar. So what is basis? Again, basis as a recap from last time basically is the difference between futures and the cash price and understanding that relationship is an important uh, part of that risk management plan. So this is a, a um, long-term chart of hogs uh, and you can see the volatility that futures price can create. So again, as in our, our last example, uh, in, last, in the last video series, we stated that futures are your biggest risk, not basis, but basis can also add dollars to a producer's bottom line. So watching that basis is important because a lot of producers tend to just ignore it and accept whatever they get when they're ready to sell those hogs or corn or canola bushels. Um, so, however, the exception was, and this is a rare case, was the 2003 BSC uh, fiasco in Canada uh, that created a very wide basis. It, it's then since it has narrowed. Um, so let's go through an example. Uh, with this hog example here, if futures are 92 and the CME cash index is 90, then we got a basis that is two under. If hog futures are 92, and uh, the cash is 95, then you get $3 over. A surplus supply is a negative or a wider basis. In a cattle example here, let's assume that cattle is 105 per carcass and the cash is 100. Your basis would be 5 under. And vice versa, if cattle futures are 105 and the cash is 111, then your basis is 6 over. A deficit supply means a positive or narrow basis. So, uh, basis at delivery point future spreads are basically simply market expectations. So in our example here, for, for example, where futures are 78, the market's saying that by mid-January, here's the date January, uh, futures are going to improve by $3, then drop by $5 by mid-April, and then increase by 7 by mid-June. So this is, this is just simply market expectations. Um, in um, this example here, we're using uh, the weekly um, uh, Canadian dollar futures chart. You can see how the dollars come down, come back up. When the dollar is rising like that, that's causing some lower dollars to that uh, livestock producer in Canada. Basis at a non-delivery point related to transfer cost. In Canada, because of our metric system, you got to convert the beef or live cattle quoted in live weight and pair of units and hogs into metric carcass weight units. So both futures and bases, um, futures have to be adjusted for that metric system, but bases and futures also have to be adjusted for Canadian dollar purposes. Canadian meat bases is exposed to large Canadian rate exchanges. So for example, in our example here, where say for example, futures are 100 for hogs, and the dollars at par versus the US dollar, the equivalency is 1.89. And then, um, you know, if, if futures are, um, sorry, uh, futures are 100 here, sorry, that was 104, and the dollar is 105, then the equivalent is 1.72. And in our last example, when futures are um, uh, 95 uh, with the dollar lower, 95 cents versus US dollar, and we've got an equivalent uh, uh, of 181. So what are some of the resources to help you manage through this basis for non-storable commodities like the, the, the livestock? Well, you can go to cattlefacts.com. It's got a lot of resources there for historical data. You're going to have to subscribe to their information. Um, a cattle producer can also uh, eliminate that subscription by actually working with your end user like Cargill. Um, you can lock in the, the basis first and the futures at a later point in time. Understanding that historical um, basis and where it's been can help you make better marketing decisions. A hawk producer can't necessarily lock in that basis with your end user like a quality meats or a maple leaf. Uh, however, you can go to the Manitoba Pork Board or Ontario Pork Board 
lock in that price and be exposed to that basis. Or you can also manage that basis through hedging the Canadian dollar through futures, options going along, call options on futures, or also, or also what is known as a forward, deriv excuse me, forward derivative contract. So this is a long-term chart on the Canadian dollar. You can see the over many, many years it was falling, but lately it's been rising. And this rise here is making Canadian producers very uncompetitive with uh, particularly the U.S. and the rest of the, the globe. But um, you can hedge that. Uh, basically, as I said earlier, we, we can go long futures, call options. I prefer using what is known as a forward river contract. You can call your local bank like Bank of Montreal or Libro Financial Credit Union. Um, and essentially what it does is acts like a futures contract, but the bank manages the margin money. So it's a very easy way to hedge that dollar. You're hoping that at the end of the day, that was money well spent, it was insurance, hoping the dollar has moved lower. If the dollar has moved lower, you've made more dollars to your bottom line. So in summary, understanding that basis, managing that basis can add more dollars to a producer's bottom line. Uh, having some historical perspective on that basis, can also help you make better marketing decisions. In our next video series, we're gonna look at uh, basis in space versus basis in time. Until next time, thanks for watching. Hope you have uh, learned a little bit more about basis for non-storable commodities. Until next time, thanks for watching, take care.